I think it's specifically because your children know how busy you are and they know how much you're admired throughout the country that when you give them time, it becomes that much more valuable to them because they understand it's not a lot, that you have a lot of time to give. It's not as if, you know, you need to, according to that time off, you have to be disciplined and you're prioritizing things. You're saying, you know, kids, you, you see that I've got all this going on in my life, but you are what stands out. You're where I want to be. You know, that may be true, but in all honesty, Shmuley, that's not the expression of love I hear from them. What they want is me. And uh, they, uh, you know, they don't care at all about whether I'm on the Oprah show, how well the most recent book is done. And it, they really don't even care that much about whether I'm happy with how things are working at the hospital. What they really want to know is that when I'm with them, I'm connecting with them, uh, that I'm actually allowing our souls to touch. Because that's the preciousness of being a parent and a child. And when we don't allow ourselves to become alive in that way, uh, and then we, don't, we hold back one of the most important emotional engagement opportunities we have in life. And as much as I love work, it's often at this level. And we need to move from the, the knowledge base to the more visceral understanding of what life is all about. And one of the most self-serving parts of Family Night is that it helps us reconnect at that level. It's hard to have that intimacy with, with someone at work, uh, without your wife getting mad anyway. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You've spent a couple of Friday nights with us at our home and uh, you know, meeting our guests and people from many different backgrounds and many different ethnicities and many different religions. And, you know, you slip right in, and do you think there's an argument to be made that when families do Friday night that they should have some guests over, maybe uh, expose their children to hospitality and some fresh blood and, and uh, new perspectives, and that's, that, that kind of experience and exposure is enriching for a child? I think what you do on Friday nights is the role model for what I would love to be able to do. You have folks over, all the kids are there, they're wild, they're running in and out, uh, which is fine mm -hmm. because they're being kids. They don't uh, fear Friday nights because they've got this four-hour sit-down. Yeah, they're going to be some talks, and they're going to have to you know, say a few things if they're old enough, or they're going to have to listen to Dad say uh, a couple of things uh, alternatively. But it's, a, it's a part of their natural existence, and they have other families come in and inoculate them to fertilize this beautiful uh, soil that you've created here uh, in your home is a wonderful thing for all the participants in the event. And one of the nice things about Friday night is that everyone can sort of sit back for a second and talk about things at a level they don't normally spend talking to each other about. And so the more voices who are involved in that uh, process, the more it becomes a, a symphony. And some may fear that it's going to become a cacophony with people arguing, yelling, and screaming. But I think that's just culture. That's who we are. And you know, we're not interested, I don't think, on Friday nights when I come over to visit you in agreeing. We're, we're interested in clarity. And that's what you bring to my life. Yeah, my final question. You, uh, you visit... Uh, Turkey a lot because your parents live there and you bring all your children there and surely there's a cultural some cultural divide between the two cultures But do you think that Turkey and cu cult cultures and countries from the East are more family focused maybe don't have the kind of electronic distractions that we have here in the West I grew up uh, a fair amount uh, I spent about a quarter of my life in Turkey and uh, I know for sure that the family life in Turkey was highly valued uh, because there wasn't a lot of other things to do and those distractions were not present uh, it probably stayed that way more than it did in this country. Um, but I do think those cultures are ones that we probably all had as human beings. Turkey just held on to it, like many other countries in that part of the world, a bit more than we have in the States. And now there's some good and bad things, obviously, about change. But I think one of the things we don't want to lose is the preciousness of family. It's correlated with childhood obesity, overall illnesses within the family, loneliness, which breeds despair and depression. All these major variables affect our lives. Even in today's economic climate, when we have such a concern about the, uh, about the economy, think about the role of family. If you have a bankruptcy, uh, you have a reduction of your life expectancy of about eight years. You know, out of the top ten okay. stressors, really? five of them are financial. Now, if you have a family structure around you supporting you, that eight-year loss of life is down to less than one year. So the first and most important thing to do, it doesn't cost you anything, when you have a crisis, is to get family. Depression, which we commonly give medications for, those medications don't really work. At least they certainly don't work their best unless you've got a social support around you to pull you back up again. Because after all, depression is just a wake-up call. And one of the best ways to get past it is family. Listen, for me, the most depressing thing in life is when I try to help somebody and I end up hurting them. So I go to the operating room and they don't do well. So someone comes to you, they say, I trust you. They, they give you their life. You take Quite it, literally, yeah. literally, and you, you don't do what you think you could have done with it. I don't care how well you thought you operated. There's always one little thing that maybe you could have cut this way instead of this way. You could have thrown the stitch there instead of here. So it's something that's always potentially your fault, and that's why it didn't work out. So that's pretty depressing, sure. But when you go home to your kids, and they're jumping up and down, and they want to be with you, they're not interested in that. It's not that they don't care about that patient's life. 
but they want to be with you. That's the deal for them. And that's what I have always used as therapy to get through those tough times. I saw you plug a woman's aorta with a piece of skin or um, a tissue that was so small that I couldn't believe that you could put one stitch through it, let alone use it to fill a hole. I mean, the kind of responsibility that you carry, and I, what, I, what amazes me is how you go from that world to the world of television and, and entertainment, which could be, I mean, you don't do entertainment, you do real, you know, solid knowledge-based uh, appearances on Oprah, but having said that, it is a slightly more frivolous world. How you, you know, so easily gravitate between those two worlds. Is, well, I'll leave, I'll leave it one quote that I was uh, given by uh, the husband of a woman I was operating on. It was a New Year's Day, and she had torn her aorta. The same thing that killed John Ritter, aortic dissection. So I remember going into the operating room and just sort of feeling for the warm blood. <laughs> That's all I was trying to feel where the blood was coming from. I got my hand on this hose that was bleeding and stopped it. We ended up operating on her. It was a long and difficult procedure. And I came out many hours later when she was still alive. Uh, and uh, I had to talk to her husband and said, well, you know, she's still with us, which is a good start. And like many patients, I expected him to say, well, thank God you saved my wife, right? Which I've always felt really awkward about because, you know, I, it's not that I don't want to accept the responsibility and honor of helping, but it, it just wasn't me alone. But instead he said something that was very sage. He said, I want to thank you for doing what you've done, but I want to thank God for giving you and your team the talent to help. And so when I look at the different things that I'm involved in, it doesn't make one more frivolous than the other. To me, they're all opportunities to take advantage of the, the gifts I was given, not just as an individual, but the teachers I was given and the circumstances I was born into. That's the larger fabric. And I think Friday evenings are all about making sure that that, 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 that basic foundation permeates through the lives of our kids. Okay. Anyway, we wish you the best of success in your new venture in your television show, September right. 2009. I think it's going to be a spect spectacular success. And I've got to tell you, beyond what everyone knows about you on television and everything else, you're such a gentleman. You are just have such a warm and loving heart. Humble and giving, and it's a pleasure to be your friend. And thank you. God bless. Can my you. wife see a copy of that comment? <laughs> <laughs> and your mother. And your mother. Okay.